Here's what I believe with pop culture entertainment. Sturgeon's Law dictates that 90% of stuff are always gonna be trash, and this can be applied to a lot of things. Most commonly, they're applied to fan fictions, because fan fictions have gained a reputation on being populated mostly with garbage. As someone who used to read lots of fan fictions, I can attest to you that this is indeed true. It is very difficult to read the gems among the garbage pile. However, I would like to say that the same thing applies to literally any fictional works out there. 90% of them are always gonna be trash, though 90% is more of a way to say that most stuff are gonna be trash, not saying that precisely 90% of them are trash. You can apply this to literally anything from any year on any decade. The NES era of games is amazing, if you pick the classics, but AVGN and many other retro reviewers have and will continue to remind you that it's the 10% classic that makes them good, rather than the 90% of LGN trash. This applies to any other video game generations as well. 2007 is considered some of the best years in video games out there. That gave us the Orange Box, Bioshock, Call of Duty 4, Crisis, Mass Effect, Persona 3, but that's only if you look at the first page of Metacritic. Then you realize that there are 10 pages of video games released that year, and the deeper you get through it, the more you realize that in a good year, it's like 10 to 20% of great stuff that managed to overshadow the 80 to 90% of stinkers. Point is, things are always gonna be mostly garbage, the good stuff are always gonna be few and far between, and it's rare for us to get a great video game year like 2007. This is nothing new, and anyone who goes through this or literally any decade of pop culture will know this, and if this is your first time realizing it, congratulations, welcome to the club. So if you are watching anything coming out of insert video game ad show, shows here and expecting every single thing for it to be really good, that's like trying to expect a diamond to come out of a donkey's butt when he's currently suffering from a massive diarrhea. Today's video is going to be an examination of all the game companies that try their hardest to hype people with their stream of promotions and, well, streams. I want to take a look at what they're doing with their current projects, future projects, and why I think they're going to the right direction or going straight to the lava pit. I'm going to start with the one game company that I'm really starting to hate as time goes on, Square Enix. It's kind of odd that despite my love towards JRPGs, I'm not really that much of a fan of Square Enix franchises. Not a fan of Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts, I tried getting to their games or their series, I just couldn't find one that clicked for me. And I'm also not that much of a fan of Dragon Quest, despite it being a beloved classic franchise. Same reason, I tried their games, it just doesn't click to me. That said, I do love their smaller or lesser known franchises like Dragon Guard, The World Ends With You, or as I like to call it, Duewi. Oh, and near too, although that one technically counts as part of Dragon Guard. One thing I noticed about Square Enix is that they're not afraid of publishing absolute stinkers. You remember The Quiet Man? Yeah, that game was awful. They published that. Then there's Left Alive. Oh god, why did I bought that game? That game was garbage and my $60 is wasted on it. There are also the ones who published the game Balan Wonderworld, a game that pretty much baffled everybody in how bad it was. So let's just say that my opinions on them haven't been high lately, but unlike a lot of game companies out there, I genuinely believe that Square Enix can make good games and they can redeem themselves from failure. People love Final Fantasy XIV at its current state and good for them. I'm not that much of an MMO guy, but from what I've heard, they've been incredible as of late. If they're given some time or if they gave it to developers who actually know how to make good games, they'd be great. But the problem is, when they're given these powers, they decide to use it in the most baffling ways. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a decision that I personally don't agree with because Final Fantasy VII is simply untouchable to me. Not only did I don't agree with remaking the entire game, I also don't agree with not remaking the entire game and only remaking at least the first 10% of the original game and changing so many things from the original game. But even if I agree with that, I will never agree on having a bonus episode for another character exclusively in the next-gen platform, especially when you can only get a next-gen platform if you do something drastic with your cash, like refusing to pay rent for a couple of months. We've talked about that in another video and how buying next-gen gaming hardwares are pretty difficult in current year. That's the one thing that baffles me too. Almost all of their entire Final Fantasy lineup are on the PC, but they chose to keep Final Fantasy VII Remake exclusive for the PS4 or the PlayStation consoles in general because 
screw you PC users, right? I will always commend their attempt to bring back their old games into modern systems, but what's the point of that philosophy when you put your mainstream releases in a platform that will be obsolete in about a decade or so, which will prompt you to do the remastering again? It's like remastering your old films to 4K, only to make your new films 720p again. And for that matter, what's the point of making it exclusive to a platform if you're gonna make the experience frustrating to those who agreed to it? Aside from that, Team Ninja got hired to make one of their spin-offs, which is a Souls-like game in perhaps the most unintentionally hilarious trailers I've ever seen. I'm here to kill chaos. Looks like chaos has been waiting for us. I want to kill chaos. You sure chaos is here? This is the shrine of chaos. He's here. Chaos. We're here to kill chaos. This guy just cannot shut up about chaos. His desire to kill chaos is genuinely commendable. I freaking love it. I love it so much, it has gone into mimetic status. Though if you want a game about an action JRPG about someone who wants to just destroy people they don't like, I recommend Drakengard 3 instead. If you have a decent rig, it's pretty much playable on RPCS3 and you can play it on 60 FPS. Of course. Why else would I be stabbing everyone? Best girl right there. The other game that they showed was Babylon's Fall because Platinum is still under clutches at this point. The game doesn't really look that impressive the first time and I'm probably not gonna buy it, but what totally killed my interest for the game is just one sentence from the developers. Yep. That's all there is to it. Sorry Platinum, this has entered my garbage list. I just want Astral Chain or Bayonetta 2 on PC. I know that Nintendo is very strict on that, but screw Nintendo, just get these games on PC. One more thing, you might remember that most Kingdom Hearts games actually came to the PC, which is totally great. Good for you Square Enix. However, they only come out in Epic Game Store, which is a rather baffling move in my opinion. I actually don't mind the Epic Game Store release, not because I like Epic Game Store, but because the game got cracked on day one. By the way, while while Crackwatch the website is dead, thankfully the subreddit rcrackwatch is still alive, so if you want to know the latest games that got cracked, that's the place to go if you can tolerate reddit at least. But we're not done with Square Enix yet. Oh no, we're only done with Square Enix East. That's the site that published their own IPs. Now we're gonna move on into Square Enix West, where the western game devs get to make games for them, and even more stupidity occurs because that's just the state of western gaming industry at this point. Square Enix West or Square Enix Europe, but I'm just gonna say it's Square Enix West, are the ones that publish most of their Western titles. There are some Western titles that they publish that I love. Just Cause series, for example. I love Just Cause 2 and, to some extent, 3. Not a fan of 4. The Adam Jensen Deus Ex is a dead franchise at this point. Square Enix and ADOS just really don't care about that. I love it. Instead, what they care about to promote are the next installment of their Marvel games in the form of Guardians of the Galaxy that they showed for way too freaking long. I'm very sure we have established how Marvel's Avengers is live service garbage, but apparently they want to continue banking on the MCU's success even further, even though the MCU as a franchise is on a rather depressing stream of stagnation. What I am looking forward to in their Guardians of the Galaxy game is not how fun the game is, but how much they're gonna nickel and dime their consumers just like last time. The other game that they demonstrated in E3 is their next installment of Life is Strange, in which you play as a woman whose superpower this time is quote-unquote empathy. No really, her superpowers is empathy. Apparently, according to the developers of Life is Strange, empathy is such a foreign concept to some women that it's considered a superpower to them, which... I don't know about you, but that screams sexism to me. Aside from that, Square Enix West doesn't have anything much in their pockets, which is a shame because there's so many things that it could do to impress me, like, oh, I don't know, a new Deus Ex game, maybe a new Thief game that doesn't suck on a lavatory. Any considerations on continuing sleeping dogs or anything that's more badass than girl has basic human capabilities as superpowers? Oh boy, Nintendo. Nintendo is also another game company that I believe can make good games, but they're extremely freaking greedy on it. There have been talks in social media that if you decide to co-stream their direct, they're gonna launch all sorts of DMCA attacks on you, which is something that Nintendo always does. Their legal team is beyond boomer tier at this point, so this kind of move is not surprising from them. But do you know what I hate the most about Nintendo? 
they keep making stuff that I really like. Despite all of these completely restrictive, totalitarian, and egregious policies that they spew left and right, they know how to excite people, they know how to make good products, they know how to tap to everyone's inner man-child and mask all of their misgivings and terribleness. That kind of power is terrifying in my opinion, one that no other game developers or companies can successfully utilize. It's not like Disney where more and more people have progressively noticed that their stuff has gone more garbage. Nintendo has their games and their franchises and nostalgia as their strength, and they utilize this very well. This is something that they are very good at in the most terrifying ways. They're good at manipulating their audiences. They're good at tugging on their heartstrings. This is something that no other video game companies have ever successfully done. And especially to me, I will never feel that level of excitement that I got from Nintendo from any other game companies. And I don't even have a nostalgia on Nintendo stuff. Their Direct is the one that I actually watched from beginning till the end. And honestly, I actually really enjoyed it. It's not even in comparison with the other shows. Even in a vacuum, I would rate this pretty high in terms of gaining excitement. But the thing is, I could be clouded by my own personal biases on the franchises being announced because there are some who say that the Direct is okay. But that's the thing about Nintendo. When they do well, they do really well. But when they're not, they're some of the worst gaming companies out there. For once, Nintendo actually care for their lesser franchises. It's still insane that we have to consider Metroid as one of them, but it is at this point. Their latest game is a 2.5D side-scroller Metroid Dread, which looks pretty cool. Though, the thing about that is how that one is going to compete against other Metroidvania games. The indie space and the AA space love that genre so much, to the point where I would totally understand if it's considered a coping mechanism at this point. They showed a gameplay of Shimigami Tensei 5 with a protagonist of really ambiguous gender. You know, Atlas, if you're fascinated with putting your male protagonist to look feminine, you might as well just go to the next logical conclusion and have Persona 6 be an actual female protagonist. Please? That's how JoJo went, and while Part 6 isn't the best in the franchise, at least the protagonist doesn't have a dick for a change. Not that I mind androgynous male protagonists cross-dressing in general. I am 100% on board with that, and so are many other people, which makes me so proud of this community. I'm already excited for SMT5, so showing more of the gameplay really doesn't do much to up my excitement again, but I did notice that the UI is very similar to Tokyo Mirage Sessions. That's really interesting. There are also a couple of games that I'm genuinely excited for. I'm happy that Fatal Frame came back, or at least it came back to remind people of the previous game made it under Blackwater. Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 are getting remastered? That's a freaking hell yes to me! Breath of the Wild 2 looks freaking cool as well. Man, I try my hardest to be cynical on this. I try my hardest to tell Nintendo to go screw itself with all of its nonsensical policies, but damn it! Nintendo wins me on this one. They know how to excite people, they know how to tap on everyone's inner child, and speaking of that, this is the news that got me screaming like a freaking kid. Some of the Smash Bros. fighters have been rather unimpressive as of late, but boy, I did not expect that. I was so excited. I scream at the top of my lungs at midnight that I'm very sure I bothered my neighbors, but I don't care. I still like Smash, despite its faults and crazy fan base. Nintendo still has the ability to tap on my inner child excitement, which is probably why they attract so many man children and child predators, but we've talked about that all the time. So, you know what, Nintendo? You're still a garbage company with the worst legal team since Twitch's DMCA management, but you focus on our accounts and that's the games. Still Nintendo exclusives for now, hopefully that can change in the future, but I'm not holding my breath. Any other game companies worth mentioning? Well, there's one more in the garbage tier list, and that's Ubisoft. They will always be on my garbage tier list, as long as they continue doing whatever they're doing right now, and not give me a new Splinter Cell game. Actually, you know what? Don't give me a new Splinter Cell game. I am sure you're gonna find a way to screw that up. There's really nothing much to say on Ubisoft, other than the fact that they haven't improved at all. Nothing on their lineup excites me. Nothing. I also don't recall them ever addressing the many scandals that they went through. I already talk about this in a separate video, but let's just say that they got themselves into quite the trouble with lots of people through the expose. If Far Cry 6 got cracked, I might consider wasting some of my time on it. Might. 
But you'll get zero dollar from me until you make something interesting and put it on Steam this time. Xbox usually offers some really good stuff in terms of presentation, but aside from a couple of games, this one is just okay to me. I'd say out of the many Western game devs out there, I'd still give my faith on the Russians or the Eastern European devs. I cannot wait for Stalker 2 or SDLKR2 or technically SDLKR4, what, Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat don't count? Anyway, it looks cool, might play it in the future. Aside from that, not really that excited. Not a big fan of Halo like a lot of other people or any of Microsoft or Bethesda's properties for that matter. Apparently Starfield is gonna be like Skyrim in space, but I have a feeling it's gonna be like a No Man's Sky at release situation. Bandai Namco or Bamco is still on my good side for the most part and they haven't done anything egregious for me to make me seriously hate them. I'm genuinely excited with Tales of Arise, the next installment of the Tales of franchise. I have a feeling that people are really gonna be thing over the female knight and of course Elden Ring, which is by From Software but they are published by Bamco. I also just realized that the Dark Pictures Anthology was also published by Bamco and that one can suck it to be honest. Unfortunately, that's the only one that they presented in their E3 presentation when they literally have the opportunity to show Elden Ring and Arise more exclusively or heck, any other game. This is like having the opportunity to present the best places in America and then proceed to only show a really dirty toilet. Capcom definitely has loads of ups and downs as of late and apparently their E3 show is a whole lot of nothing but their ups have been mostly really good. I really love Resident Evil Village and I cannot wait for The Great Ace Attorney. That's the one game out of the hundreds being announced that I'm genuinely excited for and I cannot wait to play. Just please don't demonstrate the gameplay of Ace Attorney as that's always the worst part of the entire freaking thing. I'll talk about that in more details when I actually review the game. So in conclusion, while there are a couple of genuinely welcome surprises, it's still a rather flat presentation with not much of interest. And again, that's just how it is. Most of the stuff are always gonna be crap, and you have to sit through all of the crap in order to get the gems. That's E3 presentation in a nutshell. It's the video game equivalent of dumpster diving. That's all for the video today. Consider supporting this channel by liking, subscribing, and donating through the links down below.